The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Are you tired of being misguided by self-serving financial service profit seekers? Are you looking for a better way to take control of your destiny and create a financially free path for future generations? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Banking on Your Retirement Podcast. We cut through the noise of the often self-serving financial markets with simplified yet foundational financial principles for creating a more peaceful, joyful, and prosperous life. So be brave and be free. This is your home. Now, here's your Banking on Your Retirement host, Johnny Ward. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me uh, for another episode of Banking on Your Retirement. I'm your host, Johnny Ward, and uh, I just wanted to say this is a fun process, right? Getting prepared, uh, thinking about what you want to share. And so I'll just re- kind of cap uh, how I'm going to do things today, uh, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to give you a few thoughts um, in a video clip from some colleagues of mine. They did, did this video a few years back, but they were trying to you know, outline how you could prepare for any kind of financial meltdown. And... And then I'm going to uh, show you a piece of software where I go into the truth about 401k matches because many people think that this is free money. And, uh, you know, a little uh, disclaimer, uh, maybe not. So we'll see how it plays out, and I'll run a, a clip of that that I recorded earlier. And so let me just dive into the show. Um, so I'm going to show a clip again of these colleagues of mine. Uh, They were both members of, board members of the Nelson Nash Institute. Now, Nelson Nash, again, was my mentor. Uh, He came up with the concept called infinite banking, and he wrote a book called Becoming Your Own Banker, a bestseller uh, that got me into the work that I do today and what mostly I'm trying to share things about uh, on this podcast. So the two gentlemen that you're going to see on video are Dr. Robert Murphy and Carlos Lara. Now, Dr. Robert Murphy has left as a board member. Carlos still is. Um, But Carlos is, is suffering from some other things, so we don't see much of him these days, but I'll tell you what a, what a great human being, what a great person uh, to be uh, around and listen to him. He's, he's very emotional. He's very passionate. He really deeply cares about people, and I, I hope it comes across. Uh, I think it does in the video clip that I'll show. I want to say they are not insurance agents uh, being board members is not their vocation uh, at this time. They are sharing information uh, from their heart. Uh, they're not making their money uh, by doing this. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of money running around uh, as part of this uh, Nelson Nash Institute. I mean, they sell some books and they give out information, and we're really just trying to get this information out that Nelson um, had developed. So, um, what I'm about to share uh, is not fear mongering, right? I, you know, I try my hardest not to feed into that, right? But it's being prepared, right? It's being prepared for just like the known that's coming, uh, we're going to prepare for potential unknowns. And so that's what I wanted to share today. And, um, I'm going to have uh, our producer, Chrissy, run this video now, and then I'll come back and I'll make some comments. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> as Bob mentioned, I'm a consultant and a workout specialist in, uh, in a firm that I established in uh, 1976. And I got into Austrian economics after getting financially clobbered during the period of the 1986 Tax Reform Act. Now that was soon followed in October of 1987 with Black Monday, the worst stock market crash in history up until that time. And then that crash 
was followed by the crashing of the residential and the commercial real estate market uh, to a level that had never been seen before since the Great Depression of the 1930s. It was a, a bad time. Uh, though my family and I suffered immensely during that period, uh, fortunately, I did not have to file for bankruptcy. But the record shows that millions of businesses and individuals did. Now, what I most want to tell you is that none of my personal high-priced financial advisors saw any of this coming. I was 40 years old at the time. This was actually my first realization that these uh, economic crashes don't just mysteriously happen. They're created. And this is what led me to further research and further study and I eventually came to realize that it was these Austrians that really understood the business cycle. And that's really what brings us here together tonight, because we think that the Federal Reserve and other central banks around the world have, they've done it again. They've blown up a giant bubble that can't possibly be sustained much longer. Now, what we don't want to do is string you along. I'm going to tell you right now what we believe is the strategy that you should implement. And then we're going to spend the rest of this time talking to you about the exact nature of the problem and why our recommendations will help you weather the coming storm that is coming our way. Okay, so um, Carlos, first of all, speaks of a time that I remember well. Um, often uh, in today's world, we'll hear about the great financial crisis um, that occurred in 2008. And that seems to be about as much history as people remember, even my own peers. Uh, that are in their 60s and so forth. They don't really think about the late 80s and the early 90s and how tough that was. And so when he speaks of it, I, I feel it because I remember how high-flying things were and how you know we, we fell apart and how many people were devastated and how long that devastation lasted. It wasn't like the Great Depression or at least the sounds of the Great Depression but it was the most difficult economic or economy that I remember experiencing in my whole adult, adult life, including uh, the 2008 and, you know, until we started a new bull run um, in real estate and in uh, the stock market. So I wanted to say that I could feel the pain. He came up with a three-step plan uh, of how to weather the storm. And I want to comment on, I'll just mention them really quick. You know, he said, hey, have some cash on hand because there could be bank runs. Uh, and then, of course, there's a, a panic that sets in at that point. So I think, yes, you know, having, he says, have 30 days worth of cash, you know, so that you can do things. You, maybe you can't use an ATM. You know, maybe just the banks have been shut down. Who knows, right? But if you have some cash, you can still live, and it probably won't last too long. But if it was to uh, last long, the second step is that he thinks you should own silver and or gold, and you should have an emergency stash in your personal possession for 6 to 18 months. And I say, um, you know, I understand having the physical uh, gold or silver, but there is some alternatives to that. And, you know, I'll give you a little hint about next week's episode. And there's some options and there's some reasons to consider 
having somebody else store it for you because they provide additional benefits to you. And I think it's a way to be prepared in case this whole system, as some think might you know, cr come crashing down, as I call it a meltdown, that could happen. And you know, the powers that be probably already have a solution, so-called solution. Well, we wanna have our own solution. And I think, you know, in next week's episode, you'll see that I believe I do have something that we can work on today and utilize today that can benefit you uh, if we need to flip to a new system and that the people control, not the, the government and the central bankers and so forth. The third step was to own a permanent whole life insurance policy which is your alternative warehouse for your cash. I would say the order of this should be you want to start with the policy. You want to build up, put your money in there, and then leverage somebody else's money, in this case, the insurance company's money, to borrow and then do these things. Maybe go get some cash, right? Put it in your bank account, get the cash out, then go buy some silver and gold. You know, these are just options, right? These are things that people can think about. Doesn't mean you have to do it. They were trying to guide you. I'm trying to guide you. I'm not trying to steer you. I want you to do what makes sense for you. But that's what I'm going to try to do in this episode. That's what I'm trying to do in every episode is to show you there are options. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, and when I come back, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, what's going on, really going on with your 401k match. Is it free money or is it fairy dust? I'll see you in a moment. Have you heard about Liberty Dollar Financial Association? Liberty Dollar is a private membership association that allows its members to purchase silver in different forms, which are lawful for use as mediums of exchange. Liberty Dollar Financial Association is a private alternative currency that is provided to members in both digital and paper warehouse receipts. They also sell physical Liberty coins for your personal possession, or they'll securely store your precious metals for you. They provide members with various services that allow them to use their silver's value as a means of exchange, such as their bill pay service, where they will pay your bills out of your silver account, similar to your current banker. Additionally, they offer a term deposit investment account where currently they are paying out in silver a guaranteed 1% per month, which can be compounded over a one-year term. Liberty Dollar just celebrated 25 years as a silver bullion dealer, storage facility, and exchange. To learn more about Liberty Dollar Financial Association or to become a free member, visit ldrep.nl forward slash B-O-Y-R. That's Liberty Dollar Financial Association. Welcome back. So I recorded a video of me working with a piece of software that's going to demonstrate what really happens to your match money in your 401k. Many people believe it is free money but let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a great piece of software called Truth Concepts. I am gonna go into one of their calculators and the calculator is called Qualified Plan. Uh, qualified Plans, if you don't know, is, is really um, the government term for uh, 401ks, IRAs, uh, that they qualify for this tax deferment. Um, so that's really what it means. So I'm going to run a scenario um, on an individual, and I'm going to run it for 30 years. So I'm putting up here years to illustrate 30 years. I'm going to start at 31 because that's the average or the median age. I think it's the average age for when people start contributing to a 401k, according to the Internet. And that's going to take us out to age 60. Uh, you're just getting started, so the present value is zero. Uh, earnings rate, um, I'm going to throw out a number that is pretty commonly uh, bantered around, which is 8%. And then I'm going to include a payment, and the amount that I'm going to use is 23000 which is the maximum in the year 2024. 
of what you can contribute uh, yourself to your 401k. And then I'm going to leave the increase, even though they they raised the limit um, anywhere from a 500 to a thousand each year. Uh, it did go up five hundred dollars since uh, uh, the year before 2023. But I'm going to leave this as zero, and I think that's just uh, because it makes it easier. But you know, we could always increase it and change these numbers. So. Over 30 years, we're already seeing what our contribution would be uh, and what the net account value would be. Um, but what I want to do is talk about a match. Typically, and when I when I had 401ks, uh, they would say something like, uh, you can contribute, uh, we'll match up to 6%, 50 cents on the dollar up to 6% of your salary. So I am using in this situation, you won't see it really in the video, but you can hear it. I'm going to use a salary of 200,000. And I'm going to say that they will match the 6% uh, uh, 50 cents on the dollar. Uh, and so if you were making 200,000, your 6% would be 12,000. And I will say that you're probably going to get a raise. Now, we could put zero here, but for whatever reason, I'm going to decide to put 2%, which might be on the low side. And, you know, there's some years you might not get one at all. Some years you might get a lot more. But, you know, this is really for uh, demonstration, hypothetical uh, demonstration purposes. And, you know, we can always run your numbers um, at some point. Uh, to get more um, real world for you. Okay, so with that said, you know, you'll have $6,000 a year going in plus increasing that amount, um, that, that match amount by 2% every year. Uh, I want to include taxes, right? Because we're deferring taxes. And so we've got that there. And I want to uh, use the future uh, federal tax, um, I mean, sorry, the current federal tax rate. And for someone making over 190000 the top end that's going to be deferred is 32%. And um, the future uh, federal tax rate, uh, we can look at that in a moment. Uh, the future tax age will be 61 Um and let's just go in here and put, I think your future federal tax rate will still be 32. Uh, because I work with some people in states that have income, even though income tax, even though I live in a state that has no income tax, uh, I think, you know, 5% is pretty standard. Certainly what uh, Massachusetts has, which is a bordering state to me. And I've looked at the tables in the past, and uh, they, they have varying ways of uh, introducing an income tax in, in different states. But let's just say we can we can put in whatever people want. But for today, I'm going to put in the 5%. And I would say, you know, future tax bracket rates, uh, you know, again, 32 at age 61, and it's still going to be 32 um, at 60. So, well, this is pretty much where people stop and say, hey, I'm going to have 3.7 million. Isn't that enough, right? Uh, you know, with all these benefits, um, you know, my actual what they call internal rate of return, even though we started with an earnings rate of 8%, you're looking at right now, it looks like you're getting 11.6%, right? Well, we're going to take a look at that again. But people with their 401ks and even trying to get the answer from, you know, a representative that you would talk to that is managing your 401k program or your company's 401k program, it's hard to find out what they're charging. Of course, they're making money. How are they making money? 
One is they charge a fee just to be the custodian of all this money in the 401k that comes in from you and from your fellow employees and obviously the owners uh, that are contributing. And so, or management that's contributing. So, sorry about that. If you heard that ding, um, the one thing I want to say is you're getting hit by the custodian, but the mutual funds themselves are charging fees. So again, it's really hard to get a handle on it. If you could talk to your uh, human resources department or they give you the number, you're probably going to go chasing your tail, but you can look on the internet. You know, it can go as high as 4.5%. But you're going to see different rates. And you really, even out there, it's hard to get a hold of what that number is. I mean, it's really being hidden. And I'm just going to use 2%. Because, you know, if it can get as high as, say, 4.5%, it's certainly going to be 2%. And, again, if you don't agree and you want to run your own numbers, we can run the numbers. But I'm going to do 2%. And when I did that, I don't know if you just saw that, but all the way to the right, I'm going to click and shut that off. You have a net account value of 3.7 million. I put this 2% in and it all it went all the way down to less than two and a half. So you lost like $1.2 million, right? Just by this 2%, I want to show you uh, some graphs. And at the bottom of the graph, you're going to see what the net contribution is because of this tax deferral and employer match. You'll see, you know, it's 243, but the management fee was 571,000. So it wiped out your employer match, plus it wiped out the fact that you were deferring and you had more cash available because you weren't getting taxed on as big an amount of money because you took some of it off the table and put it in your 401k, right? So that's one thing, but let's go back to uh, this screen and again, I'm going to toggle off this management fee. Look to the right where it says net account value. Just under 2.5, it goes to 3.7. So tell me, how did I lose a little over 1.2 million, right? When back down to your employer match, right? Hang on. Let me... Okay, I wanted to get my management fees in there. Sorry, I didn't click back on the management fees. Let's go back to that. How did I lose when I only had management fees of 571,000, 572,000 rounded up? How did I lose a, a portfolio amount of 1.2 million? It's because they kept taking it out. So that money was never growing. It's not like we took we can take 572 off the 3.7. No, they were taking it out every year for those 30 years. So that money wasn't growing in the same way. It literally 571 $797 right? It cost you 1.2 million in retirement savings. That's that's so drastic, right? Now, I want to go back to we're looking at these internal rates of return. We're still looking good, right? But let's do the tax deferral. And now, and then what the income tax cost is. And we've gone from an 8% return down to below 5%. See this number, 4.99%. That's the truth of what's really going on because most people are thinking about either the, you know, 3.7 that we were talking about, 3.7 million, 
hey, I got 3.7 million in there. Well, do you? Not when you go to distribute it. When you go to distribute it, you're going to be hit with taxes. You don't have what you think you have. Now, I know this is going straight to, it looks like we're taking it all at once, right? Well, that probably wouldn't be real world, but you're getting the idea, right? And the biggest point I want to make, there's probably three reasons people contribute to their 401k. One is they think they should be saving. They want to make sure they have the money available in retirement. They're thinking about Social Security and whether it's going to be there or not. So they want to, at the very least, supplement the Social Security to make sure that they still have a way of life that they would enjoy. That's number one. But many people will tell you that they're doing it because of the match, because somebody like my chief financial officer once said to me, hey, put money in this 401k and the matching money is like found money. It's like free money. In fact, you're making 50% on your money. Well, it's in the market. First of all, we don't know what's going to happen. And what we just determined when I shut when I turn this over to the graph, sorry, let me go back. We're looking at the management fees, right? Eating up all of this employer match and then some, right? So we have a better place. We can put the money somewhere else and we have access to it. This money's locked up unless we want to get penalized, right? Or we potentially could take a loan from the 401k, but they determine all the terms and you can get yourself into trouble with that, right? They want the money back and they tell you, you got to get it back and you can only take so much. So that's what I wanted to share. Um, and I hope this has been helpful and uh, please let me know. All right. Okay, so I was watching that right along with you, and you can tell I already like I'm, I'm all jazzed up. Uh, I'm gonna get better at those videos because uh, I was getting bored to tears myself. So uh, hopefully, uh, you got through it. You got something out of it. Uh, I would be happy to run some numbers for those that are listening and reach out. You know, look at your own personal situation and just see what's really going on. You know, if you can come up with what they're charging you for management fees, we can get an accurate number. Otherwise, we're doing a little bit of guesswork there. But I want to clarify, not only did it uh, interrupt or, or uh, overtake everything that you made in that match money, so to speak, so-called made, it ate up that and the tax refer, uh, deferral. So the, the reasons you're doing this is for the match and I'm going to be able to have more in my check, right? So because I'm not being taxed on as much because I took some of that off the table. And then you actually lose that through fees. I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. And that's why I you know, wanted to share it with you, wanted to talk with you about it. We'll continue this story. And I'm going to leave it at that for, for this week. I want to uh, say uh, I have some very special guests on uh, next week. Please join me. It's a new way of looking at things. Uh, you know what? You might know something about the subject, but you don't know all the details. And that's what I'm trying to always dig into is deeper details, not just the, the quick little snippets, right, that you might hear about out in the world. All right. Thanks again for joining. Uh, please join, uh, you know, the show's uh, subscription uh, whether it be the podcast or the YouTube videos. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks again. Thanks for listening to the Banking on Your Retirement podcast. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Banking on Your Retirement. And don't forget to rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks again for listening. The information expressed on this podcast is for informational purposes only. You should not construe any such information as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. Personal due diligence is the listener or viewer's sole responsibility.
The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.